Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a new lecture in your course Git and GitHub by Adionics. My name is Ahmed and in this third section of our course, we are going to start working with remote repositories. So let's get started. Now, so far we've been doing all our tasks locally. This means that all the changes that we committed are committed to the local machine only. Now, what if other developers are working with you on the same project and they need to have access to the files that you have changed? They need to have a look at the changes that you have made and occasionally, of course, they're going to have to do their own changes, add their own features or improvements, and then you will have the chance to review those changes. And then at some point in time, you will have to merge all those changes to some working software because this is how software works. This is how software projects work. Okay. But so far, and as we have just mentioned, all our changes are saved to our local machines. Only you, the owner of the machine, can have a look at those changes. So if you want your fellow developers, if you want your colleagues to have access to your files, because after all, Git and version control systems in general are all about collaboration, then you will have to use or create a remote repository. So let's create one for our project. Now, before starting the activity of creating a new remote repository, let's have a look at the difference between the local and the remote repositories workflow. Now, as you can see here, the local project directory, this is the local repository that we have just worked with in the previous section. This is the local project directory. When you add files to the repository or to the index file under .git hidden directory, we have covered this before in the previous section. Those files are put in what's called the staging area. We have covered this before. The staging area is just the preparation area where all the files that need to be committed are placed. Then you issue the commit command, and then the local repository directory will contain all the changes that you have made to your project. That is the workflow of the local repository. Then the cycle begins again. You add new files to the index file, to the staging area, and then you commit those changes and so on and so forth. But in the remote repository, things are a little different. The remote repository step comes after you committed the changes to the local repository. In other words, you cannot have a remote repository without having a local repository first. You cannot just work with a remote repository without having a local version of your work on your local computer. It's just a new feature. It's just a new step forward that enables other developers, that enables other people from outside your machine to access and make changes to your project files. So this is the second step, as you can see here, after you have committed the changes to the local repository, you issue a push request to the remote repository. This is called a push request. A push request, as we're gonna see later in this section, is just updating the remote repository with the files or the changes that have been made to the local repository. It's called a push request. And if somebody else wants to review the changes that you have made or make some more changes or add new files to the project, he or she has to issue first a pull request from the remote repository. As you can see here, a pull request is issued and the pull request will pull all the project files from the remote repository to a local repository and it will create one if it doesn't already exist. We're gonna see later in this section that this is one form of software distribution, especially open source software. Most developers create their open source projects on websites like GitHub and they encourage people to make changes and improvements to their software by pulling a version of their software from the remote repository to the local machines, make any changes they want, and then merge those changes again to the remote repository, of course, after having been reviewed by the project owner. Okay, so our first step to add a, a new remote repository is that you have to create a free account on GitHub. GitHub will be our choice of the open repositories or the public repositories available on the internet. We are going to choose GitHub, although there are other free and paid services that offer the same service as GitHub does. But for the purpose of this course, we are covering GitHub. So the first step is that we're going to navigate to github.com, as you can see here. And if you don't already have an account on GitHub, you can sign up for one. It is a very simple operation. You just enter your username, your desired username, and your email address and your chosen password, and then you click on create a new account. This will send you a verification email message to your email account that you have just mentioned here. Once you press on the link for the activation, you will have an active account on GitHub that you can use to publish your repositories. So please, if you haven't done so already, please pause this video, go to github.com, 
and create a new account, then return back. Now, after creating a GitHub account, navigate to the project directory, okay? And then we're gonna issue the following command, git remote add origin. We're gonna explain this command in a moment. Get remote add origin. And then you will enter the URL of your repository as follows. HTTPS colon double slash github.com slash. Now you're gonna enter your username, the username that you have chosen in the creation process when you created a free account on GitHub. In my case, my username is made like this. Then you are going to enter the name of the repository of the remote repository that you want to be using. So in our case, it will be called Greeter. Press enter. No output will be printed to the screen. However, if you want to make sure that no errors have been encountered, you can just issue this command, get remote minus minus verbus or minus v for short. As you can see here, you have those two URLs, this one and that one. This the one is for fetch and this one is for push. This is the one they're gonna put or push your updates to and this is the one from which you are gonna get your updates or your files and changes. Okay, so this is can this can be considered the local one and this can be considered the remote one. And of course, they are most of the times they are just the same. There is no reason to create a local repository with a name and a remote repository that mirrors it with another name. Okay, having created your local repository and having created your remote repository, let's make some changes and push those changes. So we need to upload our project files to the remote repository we just created so that others may pull their own copies and start working with us. Start collaboration. As we said, collaboration is one of the very reasons why version control systems exist now. Having created a repository from the command line is not enough to start working with GitHub. You will have to create a repository from the web application via this link, https colon double slash github.com slash new. So let's first sign in, okay, and then it's slash github.com slash new. Once you do that, we'll be presented with an empty text box like this. Just enter the name of your repository. Let's call it greeter, okay? And we are going to make this public. Public means that anyone can see the files inside that repository, but you choose who can commit. You're gonna choose who can make changes and push them to the repository. So let's click on create the repository. Now it has been created. Once done, let's navigate or ensure that we are in the correct directory, flat slash var slash www slash html slash greeter, and then let's issue the following command, git push minus u origin master. It will ask you for your credentials. So this is the username, and I'm entering my password. Once done, as you can see here, some messages have appeared. Let's quickly analyze them. Counting objects, nine. You have nine objects in the preparation area or the index. Test compress the objects for faster upload. Then it has written 820 bytes to the remote repository. Total is nine objects and the rest can be ignored. Now let's have a look here. It has been uploaded to https github.com slash made slash creator, which is the name of our repository. And notice here that you have created a new branch on the remote repository and it's called master. Master here, the second one, is the name of the branch that has been created in the remote repository, while the first master here refers to the local version of this branch. So you have a branch here that is local called master and naturally the remote one on the remote repository is also called master. Okay, now you may ask yourself why do we have a master here and a master there? Sh shouldn't they be naturally the same? Well, actually yes, but for some reason, you are able to change the name of the, of the branch in the local repository and give it a different name in the remote repository. Of course, this is strictly not recommended, but it is possible. For that reason, Git is printing this message that you are making the changes or committing the changes to a branch that is called master here locally and another branch with the same name at the remote repository. It's called also master. Now, this is also a very important message. Let's have a look here. Branch master set to track remote branch master from origin. Now, this message appears because I have used here minus u. As you can see here, minus u has been used. Minus u is used to set the tracking of the origin to master. This means that any changes that is done to the master 
here this is the master branch it is this is the local one will be tracked in the origin and origin here refers to the remote repository it is called origin because it is the first repository that you have created for the first branch it is called origin this means that changes that are done to the master here locally are going to be automatically tracked to the remote repository that is called origin in other words if i want to further make changes to this repository i am not required to mention the name of the remote repository i'm gonna push to all what i have to do is just issue git push and this will automatically push any changes that have been committed to the local repository automatically to this remote repository greeter the same goes the other way around if i issue a git pull command it will pull automatically all the changes that have been done to the remote repository greeter to the local repository where i'm standing which is greeter now in the next lecture we're gonna see how we're gonna clone back the changes to another machine so see you next